Nope. Okay, here's how this works. Anything that you see is going to be color coded. Option one is going to be blue. I call this option one because that's what our plan was to end the war with Japan. So if you didn't know, the President of the United States is commander in chief of our military. They tell the Army, Navy, Air Force what to do, where to go. Okay, they're your boss, technically, if you're in the Army. You answer to the President. The President, at the start of World War II, was whom? <coughs> FDR, still, from the Great Depression. Okay, in the spring of 1945, the last year of the war, he's going to have a stroke, and he's going to die. Who becomes President? The, the one guy, he's only got two jobs. The Vice President. Does anyone know who FDR's Vice President was in 1945? Harry S. Truman. Okay? He did not know that the United States had been working on nuclear weapons for the last four years. Okay? A secret team of scientists underneath a high school football stadium in Los Alamos, New Mexico, had a lab. They've been building bombs. Bombs that no one's ever built or used or even really understand. Did the high school know it was there? Nope. <laughs> it was underground, under a high school football that, field. Wait, and how is that underground? Is that football field underground? There was I, drainage underneath it. If I is there? Dude, I put it Just on. Google Manhattan Project and you can look it up. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay? Well, Here's why this matters. The, the Vice President of the United States didn't even know about this secret lab and these secret bombs. He did not know. Okay? So what's that mean? To end the war with Japan in 1945, we, we had to have another plan, because the Vice President didn't even know we had these bombs. So there was another plan. You're going to learn all about it today. Because if you choose not to drop the bomb, and you choose option one, you have to go through with our plan to invade Japan. Okay, it was called Operation Downfall. Until Harry Truman said, drop the bombs in August 1945, this was really plan A. The army didn't know we had a bomb. Almost none of the generals knew. The vice president didn't even know. So you imagine being Harry S. Truman, and they come tell you, hey, FDR just died today. He's been president for four terms through the entire Great Depression and World War II, one of the most beloved presidents ever. He's dead. You're taking over. By the way, we have three secret bombs. You're like, secret bombs? What are you talking about? I don't know, some about atomic energy. No one's ever built them. No one's tested them. No one knows what will happen when you set them off. But we think it'll kill a lot of people. You want us to use them? Huh. That's a tough situation to get thrown into. Okay? If you don't like Operation Downfall, you can do what Truman did. There's only choice one and choice two. If you choose choice two, that's what Truman did. You have to drop both bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. There's no, well, I would have dropped one bomb and then seen if the Japanese surrendered. To make our lives really simple, it's Operation Downfall, the invasion of Japan, or drop both bombs, Hiroshima, then Nagasaki, three days apart. Okay, couple things to know. Since Truman did this one, we understand perfectly the consequences of that. We know what will happen today if you drop these bombs. Truman didn't know. Okay? Atomic energy had never been used on humans before. It hasn't since, not on purpose. We are the only ones in human history to use atomic energy against other people on purpose. Okay? But if you choose this, we know what happens. If you choose this option, it's kind of a hypothetical because we didn't do it. We planned it. And we can surmise, based on other amphibious landings, what would have happened, how many Americans died, how many Japanese, and we'll go into that. But we know perfectly what happens if you do this. This, it's kind of an estimate, because we didn't actually do it. Okay? So, what's this Operation Downfall look like? Question? Yeah. If you scoot over next to Holly, she can show you where we're at. Okay? We don't know exactly what downfall, option one, will cost. I'm going to give you some ranges. I'm going to give you the exact same briefing that President Truman got. If they said, hey, President Truman, you want to go through with the invasion of Japan? Here's what it'll look like. So we don't know because he didn't do it. 
until he decides to drop the bomb. This was the plan. This was plan A all the way. Okay? And one thing that's irrefutable, if you choose this, more people will die than if you choose the bomb. Americans especially, but more Japanese will die if you choose this option. And you're probably going, okay, why would I pick it then? It doesn't require the use of atomic energy. Okay? Yeah, and, and some people would say morally there's a difference between shooting a guy with a rifle and having one bomb go off over a city and killing over 100,000 people in the first couple of days. Okay? So, here's the best thing we can do for Operation Downfall. It didn't happen. So we got to hypothesize what would it have been like, how many casualties, what's it going to look like. So I'm going to give you two examples. I love the Pacific War. We're going to focus more on this than Europe, as you can tell. Okay? On uh, February 1945, United States Marines landed on a little tiny island. It's only about 9 or 10 square miles. It has a big mountain on one end and an airfield on the other. And the sand is really fine black sand. It's called Iwo Jima. You've seen that picture. If you didn't know, yesterday was the 75th anniversary of the landings at Iwo Jima. It was April 20... What's the day? The 23rd or 24th? Okay. Yesterday was the landing at Iwo Jima. Those are Marines raising the flag. Also, they're on my poster. If you didn't know, that was staged. There was already a flag on top of Mount Suribachi, but when the cameraman got up, he said, take it down, lift it again, and let me get that sweet shot where you're halfway raising it. Um, the battle continued, and I think three of these six guys are going to die before they even get off the mountain, and only one of them really survived World War II. Okay, so that's Iwo Jima. You've probably been to the memorial if you went to D.C. Okay, a guy wrote a book called Red Blood, Black Sand. His name's Chuck Tatum. He's going to become relevant at the end when you make your decision. If you're interested in it, I gave you the link. That's his book on Amazon. I don't know if our library has it. It's phenomenal. He was at Iwo Jima on one of the first waves of Marines to storm the beaches. Okay? So let's use this as an example. If you want to invade Japanese-held islands, here's what happened. In only 36 days at Iwo Jima, on a tiny, tiny island, there were only about 20,000 Japanese soldiers there. That's pretty small. Okay? What happened over those 36 days is we sent over 100,000 Marines on the beach. We said, go take over this island. So we outnumber them 5 to 1, almost 6 to 1. Okay? We should win that battle. Of those 110,000 combat troops we sent into Iwo Jima, 26,000 of them were casualties. Got to clarify what the term means. It doesn't mean dead. It means dead or wounded to the point that you can't keep fighting. It's kind of like, I need somebody to get me out of here because I can't keep fighting. You get a scratch, you're not a casualty. You get shot in the leg and can't walk, you're a casualty. Okay? So we lost almost 7,000 dead and about 26,000 casualties. Do the math, guys. One in four American Marines who went onto the island is going to come off in a body bag or a stretcher. One in four. And we outnumbered them five to one. And this is a tiny little island. Okay, welcome to fighting against the Japanese army. You might ask, how many men did they lose? All of them. And you're going, yeah, we won. No, 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 no. Throughout history, what do armies normally do when they see they're going to lose? You see all your buddies get shot and more Americans than you'll ever kill coming at you. What's a normal, rational American do? Okay, you're on an island. You can't get off. Just go insane. If you can't retreat, what do you do? You don't want to die, do you? Surrender. Surrender. You surrender. If you didn't know this, the only way for all of you to die is if you refuse to surrender. So you might look at this statistic and say, almost every Japanese soldier on Iwo Jima died. Yes. That's not good for us. That means you have to fight all of them. Okay? We took 200 guys prisoner out of 20,000. Normal people, when you see your friends dying and thousands of Marines coming at you, you're like, okay, I'm done fighting. Just don't kill me. 
The Japanese do not surrender. Okay, that's a bad statistic. 216 prisoners out of 20,000? And, and newsflash, what do you think these 216 guys were doing when they got captured? They were unconscious, right? Like you found a Japanese guy who was knocked out, and you took him prisoner. In Japanese culture, the most shameful thing you can do is quit. Okay, and a lot of these guys are going to go on suicide charges. We'll show you what they do with aircraft in the next battle. But they refuse to surrender. Now, this is a little tiny island with only 20,000 Japanese on it. If you choose option one, it's going to be a way bigger battle. And you're going to face way more Japanese. Okay? And a lot more people are going to die. But basically, we win. But it costs us, big time. One in four Americans turn into casualties. And the Japanese fight to the death. Okay? Now, what's that look like? There's a lot of different ways to show you this. I think this is one of the best. Who's seen Band of Brothers by HBO? Okay, you guys all need to stop playing video games and Snapchatting, and you need to watch it. It's an awesome mini-series about American paratroopers in World War II. Did you know there's a sister series to it called The Pacific? Has anyone seen The Pacific? It's like Band of Brothers in the Pacific Theater. It's not amazingly awesome, but it's still really good. Okay, they took this Chuck Tatum guy who wrote the book about Iwo Jima, and they turned it into a mini-series. So let me show you how one movie depicted the landings at Iwo Jima. And remember,